Hello, 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 everyone. It is Teresa from Teresa Spot for Art, where I love sharing art from my heart and teaching you how to create a little joy in your life through some fun and simple art projects. Hello, hello, hello. We are going to paint the brown bunny. I have mine all traced out. If you got the kit from me, um, your canvas is pre-traced. If you order this online, you have a tracer and um, you can grab some graphite paper and it's easy peasy to just slide the graphite paper in between your canvas and the tracer and trace your design right on there. I'm going to turn us around and we are going to get started. Okay, I have on my bunny and then I have randomly placed these blobs, which will be my flowers. They're smaller than they look in the art and that's okay for two reasons. Um, one is that I used a nine by 12 tracer for my 11 by 14 canvas. And the other reason is that I always tend to do some of my elements a little smaller because when you try and fix them, they grow and we will get to that, okay? So I am going to mix a little bit of this dark brown. If you have like a espresso, a medium brown color, that is great. Um, I didn't. So I'm just adding a little bit of dark brown to my fawn here. I might need a little bit more dark brown. <clears throat> you don't want to ever add too much because you can always add more. You can't take it away. In this case, you'd just be adding more and more fawn, but that's okay. So I'm going to get started right up here on this corner. And I'm going to start painting in my background. Now I know about where my flowers are. I'm not going to completely worry about painting around them as long as I have a little bit of white to show me the placement. However you want to do is up to you. You can go in and pencil in your flowers after you've done your entire background. You can eyeball your flowers. Um, you can paint them around them a little bit like I'm doing here. Totally up to you. But I'm just using the mixture of this fawn that I have and the dark brown. When I come over to my bunny, I'm going to get really tight up on my chisel edge with my paintbrush. And there we go. And I just want to paint in the background. You want your brush to move. You want your brush to move easily on your canvas. If your brush is not moving or you have to fight with it or you are getting a lot of white spots in your canvas, that means you don't have enough paint on your brush. That means you want to add a little bit more and not be shy with the paint on your brush. Okay, your paint brush should move like melted butter on bread. Not even melted butter on toast. No, your brush should move like butter on bread. I know, am I making you guys hungry? Everything is always about food with me. Okay, so I have done my background. I'm going to come over here again. I used the smaller um, tracer for this larger canvas so that's why I have a little bit of edge around here for my bunny whereas if you have the different tracer or you have the kit from me your bunny is a little bit off the page and that is fine we love when our elements go off the page it makes them a little bit more interesting also in case you hear my froggy voice I'm just getting over a cold and laryngitis I feel fine, but my boy, my voice, my voice is not back yet, so um, bear with me. I apologize. Although some of you may prefer this voice over the real one, but we won't get into that. Now I'm just going in and I'm painting in the edges of my canvas. You can paint the edges of your canvas. You can leave the edges of your canvas. You can paint a fun design on the edges of your canvas. It's your art, 
your way and you can do whichever you want. For I always do something different and for this particular painting, I'm going in and painting my edges and when I, and I call it a wrap because I am painting the wrap of my canvas the same color as the front of my canvas. So I'm wrapping the paint around. But if you want to paint your edges of your canvas something else, that is totally up to you. So now, now I know my uh, flowers look a little wonky, but I'm not going to worry about that because when we go and base coat those in, you'll see it won't even matter. I just use those little areas so I would know pretty much where I laid out my flowers to begin with. And now I'm gonna wash my big brush. I have been using two cups. I put a drop of dish soap in one, and then I use a second cup with nice fresh water. I feel like it's been keeping my paint water a little bit cleaner, especially if I'm doing multiple tutorials in one day. And then um, I tend to be a little type A with my brushes. And so when I am done for the day or at the night, I will take my brushes into the other room and I will wash everything. I do not leave my brushes in my paint water in my cup overnight. Uh, if you do, that's fine. No judging here. So I am now picking up some white. I want to get a decent amount of white on my brush again because we want our brush to move well on our canvas. And I'm going to base coat in my bunny in white. Don't worry if you go over his face. You should probably still be able to see the lines for the eyes and um, his mouth and nose. That shouldn't be a problem. If it is, you can go back in and paint them and mark them in with a piece of chalk or a pencil. Totally up to you. When I go to do my outlining or the border, I use my brush upright on what's called the chisel edge, this part of the brush. It helps you get a nice straighter line. We'll do the same thing up here. Stand up on the chisel edge and pull down. My brown is still a little wet. I don't mind it because it's giving me a little bit of shading in my ears. But if your brown is too wet, if you're picking up too much brown, you want to be patient and wait for your uh, base coat to dry. Or you want to grab a hair dryer or a heat gun or something and force your paint to dry quicker. I don't mind having a little bit of shading in there. It's not going to make a difference. And so I'm, I'm just going to keep going. Remember, this is a recording. If you need to stop, take a break, you miss something, you want to go back, just hit the pause button. And then you can go back, rewind, Come back after dinner, whatever it is you need to do. I want my bunny a little bit wider down here. So I'm just actually bringing out the bottom a little bit wider. And that's okay, because it's acrylic paint and you can paint over anything. And I'm just going to, again, just paint a little bit of white on the edge of my canvas where my bunny's body would have been wrapping around to the bottom. Okay. <clears throat> Add a little bit more in here just to go over that part. Okay, so now we have our background um, when we have our bunny base coated in. Okay, so I'm going to now wash my brush. <clears throat> I have out two greens. I have out um, this deep forest green, and then I have this um, festive green. I'm going to use my big brush. 
I'm going to pick up some of the festive green and I'm going to move my paint. I'm going to use my brush in a dabbing motion and I'm just going to start dabbing around my canvas. I'm going to start framing out the design in this greenery. Now this does not have to be perfect. It can be a little bit messy. You don't want it to be like a line. So some of my areas will be thicker. Some of my areas will be thinner. Some will come more onto the canvas. Some are darker, some are lighter. And I'm just using my brush, picking up a decent amount of paint and pouncing it in towards the inside of the canvas, towards my design, and I'm basically putting a nice greenery frame. My wet, oh my wet, my white is still a little wet, so I might wait for that to dry a little bit. Yeah, I'll wait for that. And I'm just framing in. Again, I know where my flowers go. And now I'm gonna pick up some of this dark green. I'm gonna go back up to here. And now I'm adding a little bit of the dark green over top where I did the lighter green, the festive green. And we just want it, this, aside from the bunny, which is not even realistic, our flowers, our greenery, our background for this painting is a little abstract. We're throwing perfect out the window for this one. There's nothing about this painting. Well, if you listen to me, nothing about any of your painting ever needs to be perfect, right? It's art, it can't be wrong. I say that all the time. We're just pouncing in and we have a mixture of greens now, our light green, our dark green, and we don't have an even frame around, okay? I'm just gonna wipe off my brush a little bit. I'm gonna go back into my light green and I'm gonna go back over here to my white and pounce in some of that and I'm gonna pick up my dark and pounce in my dark. I don't want the bottom here to be at all white and I don't want the edge around here to have any brown. Around the outside here it could be brown and have a little green, but when you're looking at it from up top, from this view, um, you don't want it to have any brown on the sides or any white on the bottom. Now I know yours goes off the page here, so I'm wondering, I'll just add some flowers. I'm not gonna go in there. I don't wanna confuse you guys. Okay, I'm gonna wash my brush. And now I'm gonna switch to my smaller flat brush. If you wanna use um, the round brush, you can. I'm gonna switch to my smaller flat brush. And I'm gonna go into my dark green. And I'm gonna go where my flowers are and I'm just gonna start adding in some football shapes with some leaves. That's it, when we do our leaves, we want them tapered. In this case, it's under the flower. You'll see that when we do our flower later. But this side is tapered and theoretically this side is tapered, but you can't see that side, okay? I'm just gonna go in and I'm painting in these very um, primitive, easy leaves. Now these may not match the reference image, and that's okay. I try and do it as best as I can to the reference image. Sometimes one thing is too big, one thing is too small, and it doesn't always work out exactly the same, but I do try and make it as close as possible. Although, you know, I'm not a machine, I can never just paint the same thing exactly the same more than once. So I'm adding these flowers, these leaves down here because I'm gonna move these flowers up a little bit. The more important thing now is to get the shape of your leaves, almost like a football, where they're tapered on the ends and wider in the middle. Mm -hmm. 
often we're just filling them in with our dark paint and don't fret if they don't look like mine we don't judge our paintings until the end and we have a lot of um, details to add and other elements to add and so we don't get all jammed up about our painting until the end and then at the end it all comes together and we're like whoa that worked out okay so I'm gonna wash my brush I'm gonna get out a little bit dark brown and put it right here in my puddle where I mixed my brown before <laughs> And now I'm going to base coat in the bow tie and the insides of the ears. So I'm going to come up here. The inside of the ears are basically like the same football shape almost that we did with our leaves. And we want to fill it in. Okay, that's one. And that's two. Okay, my white is still a little wet, so I may need to go back in and do a second coat. And again, over here, now I'm doing the bow tie. And this is just the base coat. We have details to add and polka dots to add and other things so if you have a little bit um made a little bit of a mistake or something is a little wonky don't worry we will fix it you can go back to it something you don't love you can add another flower or another leaf and nobody will be the wiser i'm just going my Brown looks even lighter on the screen than it does on my art. But I'm just adding a little bit of more dark brown paint. Darken up my bow tie and my inside of my ears. Okay. Oh, one side got a little bigger on my bow tie, so let me come down here. This is what I was saying before about the elements and our, why I put them in smaller. Because you will try and fix the left, then you'll try and fix the right, then you'll try and fix the left, then you'll try and fix the right. And before you know it, your flower, your leaf, your eyes are like three times the size they were when you started. Sometimes you just have to be like, okay, pencils, pens, paintbrushes, down. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to wash my brush, give it a nice rinse, and dry it off on my rag over here, or paper towel, or whatever it is that you have to dry your brush. Okay, going into my yellow, and I'm going to start blobbing on, yes, blob. Lobbing on yellow for my flowers. <clears throat> one over here. I want this one on top of the green. Don't worry that you can see the brown. We're going to do a second coat. And we have a lot of details to add to our flowers as well. Go up in here. These are roundish, but they're not perfect circles. The edges are very, um, I don't know, random, I guess. I'm basically just doing comma stroke after comma stroke. So I curve to the left, curve to the right, 
and they're round, but they're not perfectly round. They're not perfect circles, they're just a round shape. Now I'm gonna pick up some white, and I'm gonna mix it in with my yellow. Not because I want a new color, because I want my yellow to be just as bright, but because that will add to the opaqueness of the paint. And I'm gonna go back in, and now I'm just going to pick up the color I made, plus the fresh yellow, and go around. Now see how my, my brown is getting covered now? But I didn't really lighten up or whiten up my paint that much. See the difference? Here, my brown is almost completely covered. Here, I can still see a lot of it. Just by adding a little bit of white to my yellow paint, having some yellowish, whitish paint on my brush, and then going back into the yellow. I still have this nice bright yellow, but I have a nice, um, better coverage on the brown than I had to begin with. See that? I'm going to do the same thing over here. Like right now, you can't probably see that it's more than one flower. This is two. This is three. This is two. This is three. That's one. But you'll be able to see as we go around when we add in the details later, you'll be able to see that better. <clears throat> and then I want one. I'm just going to dry this off a little bit. <clears throat> so I'm going to put another one over here in the corner. And this one is going off the edge. So this one's not even completely rounded. You envision it coming like this and being a little bit off the edge. Okay? <clears throat> and I'm gonna wash my brush again. And I'm gonna to switch to my smaller brush. And I'm gonna go back to the dark green. If you have a small liner brush or small round brush, if you um, are lighter handed, it works really well as a liner brush. If you use a little bit more pressure, it um, can be useful to adding in some sprigs of grasses and some greenery. So like I said before, this background is very abstract. We're just trying to have our little bunny in the woods and I'm just pulling in these stems and then taking my brush with a little bit of light pressure and adding in a little bit of strokes to the stem have some of these leaves and greenery sticking out. The lighter pressure that you put on your brush, the lighter and the smaller your strokes will be for your leaves. Again, this is a good place if you have something there that you don't love, if you spilt, um, if you're background greenery when you pounced around the back got a little bit away from you this is where you can stick more leaves more greenery to hide whatever mistakes that maybe you had going on okay i'm also going to get this i'm going to put in a little bit of darker one. i'm going to put one in here so this time i want a little bit darker and i'm adding a little bit more pressure and I want these leaves to be a little bit thicker. So I'm going to put one at the top and then out to the sides. We want overlapping so I'm overlapping the edge. I'm overlapping the greenery. I just put in there. I overlapped a little bit on my leaf. 
little bit of pressure, pull into the stem. Little bit of pressure, pull in to the stem. I'm just gonna wipe my brush off and then I'm gonna go into my light green. And I'm just gonna start adding in little dabs of this bright green to each of my little leaf segments from before. The ones I just put on that are a little bit fatter each of my little leaves is getting a little bit of this light green, or a, uh, light green, this festive green onto each leaf. Give it a little bit of dimension, a little bit of highlight. You can even add some in here if you want. If you're afraid, if you don't think you have a light enough touch, you can skip it, it's up to you. And then I'm also going to take the light green and I want to add a light green highlight to one side of all of my big leaves. Presumably the same side, to the left or the bottom or the right or the top, whichever way you go. Okay. I'm going to wash my brush. <clears throat> I'm going to get a little bit of pink. Only need a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. What I'm going to do his cheeks. If his face is dry, um, you be the judge. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of pink. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put in a little circle of pink. And then I'm going to dip my brush in white. And I'm going to swirl it and make it a little bit bigger. And again, this is the same thing. These do not have to be perfect. But if you continue to be like, ooh, that one's too big, that one's too big, that one's too big, they will grow, believe me. So at some point, you just have to be like, oh, Works for me, those are good. And be like, okay. <clears throat> and wash my brush. And now I'm gonna get out my purples. We have a dark purple, purple pizzazz, I believe. Yep. And then I have a light purple. This is a, um, a folk art color, and this is wisteria. Ooh. Rinse off my round brush, give it a nice dry. Now we're going to add in some abstract. We want to have some color in here. We want it to pop. So with my round brush, the trick with doing these, I call them lilacs, but they're not really lilacs, and they are pretty abstract. You want them to be in a triangular shape, wider at the bottom, thinner up at the top. Hmm? So I'm just going to start dotting, dotting in wider at the bottom, thicker at the top. And here, right along this side. And again, mine may be a little bit different from your reference image. You be the judge, you can follow the reference image exactly, or you may be like, oh, I need a little something over here, and then you'll move them and put some flowers over there. Totally up to you. Here's when I actually switched it, and now I have the pointed part going down, so it looks like it's falling down there. And that's it, I'm just dabbing. With my purple. Making sure that it's wider on the bottom 
and then thinner at the top. I like to make them, even though they are triangular, they have a little bit of a curve to them. And I'm just randomly dabbing in for color these purple flowers. One, two, three, four, five, six. And like in the floral world, in the art world, we like to have odds. In the real world, I like to have even numbers of things, but when I paint, I have to follow some rules and we have to have odds. So there I have seven clusters. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna pick up some of this light and I'm just gonna start randomly dabbing in some of this wisteria. It's mixing, it's highlighting, it's giving us different shades. And again, don't forget, this is very abstract. If you are type A like me, let it go for a minute. Let it go, let it go. No, you have to let it go, it's fine. It's art, it can't be wrong. As the wisteria and the purple mix, some of it's lighter, some of it's darker, and you have a lot of nice different colors going on here and a lot of highlighting and shading. Okay, let me wash my brush again. Okay, now I'm gonna put out some of this um, Sienna color. I could share over here too as well. As if I'm not messy enough, I often spill paint opening the bottle. It'll just pop right out. Okay. We let the base coats of our flowers dry a little bit, and now we're gonna go back to our flowers. I washed my brush. I'm gonna give it a good dry, and we will get started. So let's just, let's review for a moment while mine dries. We did our background. We did our background in a soft brown. I mixed the dark brown and the fawn, and we did our entire background. Then we base coated our bunny in the white. I picked up a little bit of brown and added some shading. It's okay. If you didn't want that to happen, make sure that your background, oh, I missed a flower, was nice and, you know what? I'm not gonna even make that a flower. I'm gonna cover that with the brown. Um, just make sure that your base coat was nice and dry and then you don't have to worry about picking up any shading when you did your white for your bunny. Okay, that'll dry. Um, then I went in with the big brush, again, after I washed it, nice, and I pounced some greens around the outside. I started with the light green, then I went over it with the dark green. Then I base coated in the brown for the inside of my ears and the bow tie. And then I base coated in um, my yellow flowers. I mixed a little bit of white, make my yellow a little bit more opaque, base coated in my flowers, and did the football shape with our leaves. Then we went in and added in these filler leaves. <clears throat> some of them were stalky, like grass, and then some of them had little fat more leaves on them. And then we highlighted them up. Did some light pink for the cheeks. And then we pounced in some wisteria, lilac, abstract flowers around the purple, around with purple to make it pop a little bit. Now I put out my sienna, my orange color. If you wanna practice these flowers first on some scrap paper, do your own blob on some scrap paper or whatever, and then practice these. We're just gonna do a series of um, what do you call it, commas and apostrophes. And I keep dipping in my paint. And we're gonna layer in to our flowers, different sizes, working towards the middle. This is when I said, now you will know 
where one flower starts and one flower ends when we start adding in these details. And I'm just doing a series of commas and apostrophes, different lengths, different pressures. And they're very abstract petals. Some overlap. You want to be able to see the white. I mean, you want to be able to see the yellow. Sorry. And work towards the middle of your flower, okay? So commas, apostrophes, some are bigger, some are smaller. And again, this is when you know that you have, in this case, three different flowers, the one big one, the one smaller one, and then the other smaller one. Just by the way, you do these comma and apostrophe strokes. Up here we have two. One, two, here we have two, here we have two, and then one each here and here. A little bit of hair there. <clears throat> okay. Wash my brush and get out some of this really cool gold. This is 14 karat gold. We wish, right? <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing with the gold that we just did with the sienna. So I'm going to wash my brush. And we do this it's okay that our sienna is a little wet. This way it'll mix with our gold a little bit and we will have different varieties and hues of our sienna and our gold. Some of our gold will get a little darker. Some of our sienna will get lighter. This gold is a metallic, so it has a really nice shimmer to it. And we're just going back in and we're doing the same thing with the gold paint that we did with the sienna. Doing commas and apostrophes and working our way towards the center. That one's tucked underneath. This is a big one. This is why we started out with a blob to begin with. And it's circular, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Not a perfect circle. And I missed these two down here. Hopped right over them. If your strokes start to become a little too thick, you might have built up a little bit too much paint in your brush. Just go to your paper towel or your rag or whatever it is. Give it a nice wipe and then go back to your surface. Okay. Oh, so cute, you cute, cute, cute. Okay. Now I'm gonna use the back of my brush. I'm gonna go into my gold paint and I'm going to dot some bow ties on my dot some bow tie, dot some polka dots on my bow tie. You don't want to make a pattern. You want them to be random. And I'm using the back of the brush, dipping it in the paint, and then going right over to my canvas. Okay, I'm going to dry that off. And I'm going to wash my brush. Now using the same brush again, I'm going to go into the white. And this time I'm going to use the white and I want to dab in 
the centers of our flowers. Now sometimes the centers of our flowers won't be right in the center. Like this one is covered up and this one is whole. So this one presumably is a little bit under there. So the center is a little bit more over. Okay, the same thing up here. Instead of being right in the center of that one, this one's a little bit tucked under. So the center is a little bit off to the side. And again, we're just using little dabs. We still want to be able to see the yellow. We don't want to over cover, but we just want the inside centers of our flowers to pop. Okay. And I'm gonna wash my brush. Okay, now we're gonna start working on his face. I'm gonna take a little bit of this purple. I wanna lighten it up a little bit with the wisteria. I still want it dark, but maybe not as dark. So I'm just gonna lighten it up. That's good. And I'm gonna do the nose. The nose is like a flat heart or a kidney bean. Okay, filled it in. Okay, watch. I'm gonna grab the brown. I want to twirl my liner, my round brush, my small liner brush in the brown paint. I'm going to do one side of the mouth and then I'm going to do the other side of my mouth. Now I can still see my lines. I hope you can too. If you can't, you may have to grab a pencil or just go for it with the paintbrush. It's up to you. And while I'm doing this brown, I'm gonna start adding in a little bit of outline. While I have the brown on my brush to the rest of my bunny. Now we don't wanna go around the whole thing. I'm just a little bit adding in a little bit of outline. I'm going to take a little bit, I'm going to add a couple of little dots here. Just makes it a little bit more whimsy. You can use the back of the brush for this if you want. Just a few, not too many, just sporadic here and there. I'm going to clean my brush. Now I'm going to go into the white and I'll put it into white highlights. So white highlight on that side of the ear, that side of the ear, nose, bow tie. And again, I'm adding these, these outlines, these highlights, but I'm not overdoing it. I'm not making them completely touch and go exactly with the shape. Nope, just swishes of white. I'm gonna wash my brush again. And I'm gonna get out a little bit of black. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go to the eyes. 
I'm going to turn mine upside down so I don't put my, like, you know, I'm going to paint it sideways. It's okay. I don't want to put my hand in the um, flowers. This way I have nothing down here that's wet. I'm going to twirl my brush into my black a little bit so I have a nice point. And the first thing I want to do, I'm going to line up one eye with one side of the nose and the other eye with the other side of the nose. So now I pretty much have my placement. I can see my eyes through there, but this is just helping you and I'm walking you, walking you guys through it. So if you're ever doing a different painting and you're like, oh, where do I do my eyes? This is how I do eyes freehand. I line one up with this outside of the nose, the other one up there with that outside of the nose. Again, I'm gonna twirl my brush and then I'm going to paint in my ovals. And like everything else I was telling you guys before, they will grow. If you're like, ooh, fix that, ooh, fix, oh, I gotta fix that, oh, that. And I am guilty of it too, it happens. Sometimes you just have to be like, okay, deal with it, and be done. Okay? So there I have my eyes. Bring this one down a little bit. See, I'm doing it. Okay. And the one, I'm breaking my rule, you guys. Okay, that's it. Brush down. I'm not doing it anymore. Okay, but I'm going to go this back into the black. I'm going to do the same thing with the black that we did with the white, except a little less. I'm adding some black, but not too much. Put a little bit of black. And a smile. Put a little bit of black under the nose. Then I'm going to just take and random, not completely outline, but more or less define the shape of these flowers just by adding little random squiggly outlines. That's it. I'm not doing the whole flower. I'm just lightly adding squigglies to define the outside shape of my flowers. And this is why I said if you couldn't see how many flowers you had, we will be able to soon enough. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to add a little stroke of black on my big leaves on the opposite side of where I put the green. Okay, and I'm going to wash my brush again. Okay, and then last but not least, our eyes. So, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna rest my hand with my pinky. I'm gonna put a little white stroke. Another little white stroke. I'm gonna get the back of my brush and I'm gonna put a dot and a dot. And there we have him. Okay, let me turn you guys around. So, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. See, this is the one I painted previously. Oh, good thing I turned you guys around and looked. 
forgot his whiskers. Oopsie. So, and what reminded me, that guy's whiskers were black. This guy's whiskers are going to be white. Maybe gold if you need to. So, I'm going to dip in my brush. I'm going to come over here to his cheek. One, two, three. And the same on the other side. One, two, three. If you want to darken them up a little bit with some gold, I didn't even clean my brush. I just went right into the gold paint. And I picked up some gold on my white dirty brush. And went in there. There we go. Now let's back up. So, thank you guys for joining me for the little brown bunny. There he is with his whiskers all done. This is one I painted before. And there you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. And I will see you soon. Have a great time, everyone.